integrated financial management information system alongside the Treasury single account in April 2012. The process of implementing an efficient cash management system commenced. Meanwhile, the federal government has declared Fontua Inland Dry Port in Katsina State as a part of origin and final destination for the import and export of cargoes, which will help promote international trade. According to statements by the Director of Press and Public Relations, Ministry of Transportation, Henshaw Obuike, the declaration which was made on behalf of the federal government by the Minister of Transportation, Moazu Sambo, was coming many years after the establishment of the Funtua Inland Dry Port. Sambo explained that the Funtua Inland Dry Port will be a customs port in accordance with the provisions of the Customs and Excise Management Act, CAP, C45 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and will have all the prerequisites of an international port. He said that the importance of Katsina State as a commercial domain in the trans-Saharan trade route with huge agricultural produce and trade in local and export volumes qualify the state for an inland dry port. Now, the importance of Katsina State as the commercial domain in the trans-Saharan trade route with huge agricultural trade in local and export volumes is well known and well documented. The state has been ranked in agricultural products and in other businesses in the country, such as the largest producer of cotton, second largest producer of sorghum, and the state also produces about 13% of Nigeria's sugar cane, placing it second place in Nigeria. The World Bank ranked Katsina State as the seventh in the ease of doing business ahead of Lagos, Kano Rivers, and Cross Rivers. The state also ranks 12th in micro, small, and medium enterprises. The state was ranked 17th in gross step product with an average per capita of $6,022. Major producer of other cereals and legumes, crops, and home to several manufacturing industries. The state is not only suited, but most qualified for an inland dry port. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, you may wish to recall that the inland dry port project was conceived, as earlier stated, as part of the federal government's ports reform program, designed to, among others, decongest the seaports while also taking shipping and port services closer to importers and exporters in the hinterland. It is worthy of note that as a result of the zeal of the Ministry of Transportation to ensure that the... Away from that, the Digital Corporation Organization, DCO, and the International Organization to Promote Digital Prosperity for All has called for an open collaboration among nations to bridge digital divide. In a statement, the organization gave the ministerial declaration as its second general assembly in Riyadh. The statement called for increased international dialogue to identify and promote successful approaches and impactful initiatives that will empower nations to create sustainable, inclusive and equitable growth of the digital economy. The DCO also called for international cooperation to coordinate efforts and develop sustainable solutions that were specifically rather tailored to address four major concerns such as policies and regulations, micro, small and medium enterprises, digitalization, digital skills and education and digital transformation. 
On Naira crisis, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has restrained the federal government from implementing the February 10th deadline of the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes to stop being legal tender. Recall that the three northern states, Kaduna, Kogi and Zamfara, had in a motion ex parte filed on February 3rd, prayed the Apex Court to hold the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN Naira redesign policy. The seven-man panel of the Supreme Court, led by Justice John Okoro, in a unanimous ruling granted an interim junction restraining the federal government, CBN commercial banks, among others, from implementing the February 10th deadline for the old narrow notes to stop being legal tender. The court further held that the federal government, CBN commercial banks, must not continue with the deadline pending the determination of the notice in respect of the issue on February 15th. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Mahmoud Yakubu, said that with 16 days to the general elections, there are indications that the new narrow notes scarcity may disrupt the exercise. The ANIC chairman made this known during a meeting with the central bank governor, Godwin Omefile, at the CBN headquarters, Abuja. He explained that many service providers to ANIC had no bank account. He solicited the support of the Apex Bank to address the concern related to the CBN cash withdrawal policy, which had caused chaos across the country. On electoral matters, the presidential candidate of the Liberal Party, Peter Obi, has appealed to Nigerians to support him to turn Nigeria around in the forthcoming general elections. Obi met the call at the public presentation in Abuja. He thanked Nigerians for choosing to be part of his little effort to see that a new Nigeria is possible. According to Obi, the 2023 elections is an existential election and he urged every voter to be involved. Meanwhile, the European Union Election Observation Mission has promised to deploy 100 observers across Nigeria to monitor the forthcoming general elections in the country. The observers will include seven members of the EU Parliament, election technology and analysts, who will be deployed for the first time by the mission. Nine media analysts, five social media analysts, legal analysts, political analysts, among others. According to the union mission team, Part of the activities of the mission will include observing and assessing the impartiality and performance of the election administration campaigns and financing. Universal franchise afforded to voters, especially to women, youth and vulnerable groups. Conduct of the media, including social media, the use of technology in the electoral process and the results management system, amongst others. The team's media analyst, Interlist revealed that a statement of preliminary findings will be released by the mission's chief observer, Barry Andrews, at a press conference the day after the elections. Back here, residents of Uyo, a Kwaibam state capital, have lamented the unavailability of the redesigned narrow note and charges from point of sales operators, POS. They complain that most POS have closed down while some have no new note to pay due to the situation, adding that the few that have charged exorbitantly. Just coming out from the bank, I went to get money. The crowd was too much and I didn't have any money on me. So coming out, I had to trek. I went to the POS, they didn't have, I've been to like 10 POS, there was no money anyway. And um, even the bank, they are still giving old notes. You get so when you want to get something from these local people who don't understand how the system works, they will reject the money. They'll say they are looking for the new note, and the bank are not issuing the new note. And besides, you can't even get to the bank. The crowd there alone is too much. People are not able to get money. People said, like the people I met today, they said they've been here for the last three days, since Monday. They've not been able to get even 1,000. People are shedding tears. And like yesterday, I heard someone collapse. They are using money to... 
According to POS operators, the 10% of charges on every transaction is due to insufficient circulation of the redesigned narrow notes and the stress involved in obtaining them from the ATMs and banks. They disclose that they obtain money from petrol stations and supermarkets paying 10% for each transactions. To buy money now because there's no money. From business center now, like supermarket, filling station, like that. When you hold it, you have to buy the money. You still deposit the money for them. In Africa, Tunisian President Kayes said announced that he has fired the country's foreign minister, Othman Jarandi. The president appointed Nabil Amr, Tunisia's ambassador to the European Union, to replace Jarandi. He did not give a reason for Jarandi's dismissal. Jarandi is the fourth minister to lose his position this year, with the trade, agriculture, and education ministers having already been replaced. Said carried out a series of measures in 2021 to enhance the power of the presidency at the expense of parliament and the judiciary. While still in Africa, Tunisia has reportedly joined the long list of countries that are sending aid to the quick hit Turkey and Syria. According to reports, President Kayez Said had ordered humanitarian aid for countries including over 15 tons of blankets and food after they were hit by a, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake which killed and injured thousands of people. Dozens of nations including the United States, China and the Gulf state have pledged to help and such teams as well as relief supplies have begun to arrive the countries by air. On our foreign scene, more than 9,000 people are reportedly killed in Turkey and Syria following the earthquake. According to the country's disaster agency, the number of people killed in Turkey has risen to 6,957. Syrian state media and rescue groups say more than 2,500 people have died in the country. Still on a foreign scene, UNICEF's senior emergency advisor for Syria, Melinda Young, says getting aid into the country's north is very difficult at the moment. Young says many roads are damaged, especially at the main border crossing, making it more difficult to get aid supplies sent across from Turkey to organizations working in Syria. She noted that many water systems in the area are also damaged, adding that the situation is particularly difficult for the children who had gone through years of conflict with many displaced during that period. Well, still to come in the news, Lebron James breaks NBA all-time point scoring record. Stay with us.